today uh, I'm going to talk to you about building a conversational Teams bot with open API, uh, open AI, not open API, that's something completely different. And the idea is we'll kind of go through the sample and show you how it all uh, hangs together. So as I said, I'm a solution architect uh, for a company called Simity based in the UK. And hopefully it will let me pick my, there we go. So a bit about myself, uh, I'm based in the UK, uh, in Birmingham uh, to be exact. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, I've got GitHub, um, and obviously you can follow my blog, uh, which I do blog very occasionally. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP in uh, M365 development, um, and I mainly work in Microsoft technology, so M365, Azure, and the like. Obviously, I like to write code for a living. That's why I'm on this call. Um, and when health permits, I do like to go for a run. But uh, yeah, there we go. So, so what is a conversational bot? Exactly, and that's the term that I've just sort of coined for this session. Um, and we'll go over what it's not first, which is it's not a Q&A bot. So we're not asking it a question, expecting an answer like what is two plus two or, you know, what's the weather today? It's it's more kind of um, uh, advanced than that. Um, it's also not a uh, fixed or predetermined path bot or sometimes called a waterfall, uh, waterfall dialogue where, you know, you've got a predetermined path that, you know, if you answer option A, you know, for the first question, it's then going to present three um, you know, uh, other uh, questions down the road that are predetermined because you chose option A at the at the beginning of the of the of the conversation. That's again not what we're, we're we're talking about. Conversational bot. What we're talking about is a bot that you can have a conversation with um, without any predetermined outcome or path. So, you know, you can put whatever you uh, you want as a question or or as a task, um, and you don't necessarily know what you're going to get back because it's not sort of being coded or predetermined what's going to happen. So. Um, what, who or what is OpenAI? Um, so I did think about using ChatGPT to ask that question, but it, uh, instead this is actually what OpenAI call themselves. So they're a research and deployment company, um, and you know they're trying to effectively uh, help uh, AI be you know adopted uh, out it, uh, sort of out uh, out there in the world, um, obviously to benefit uh, all of humanity. So let's see how that goes over the years. So what can you do with OpenAI? So um, there are different products and there's probably ones that I'm not going to cover here, but the sort of the three uh, main ones that we're going to uh, sort of talk about here are uh, uh, DALI 2, which has been around a little while now. Um, I think there's some uh, samples of this uh, running um, already with uh, sort of M365 uh, products, but the idea is that you can generate an image from a description. So you could say, you know, um, draw, uh, uh, you know, a, a panda um, living on the moon or you know something really random. And the idea is it will try and generate that base on the description and the more descriptive you are generally the better the uh, the generated image is um, so that's one uh, another one is gpt3 that's what we're going to talk about today in a few minutes and this one is um, sort of i say natural language conversation so the idea is that it's not predetermined you can kind of have a, a back and forth with uh, with the uh, with, with the, the gpt3 uh, product and it's going to kind of in theory um, you know, lead to a lead to a good outcome and the final one is uh, ChatGPT, which everyone probably already knows what it is. It's quite a hot topic at the moment. Um, obviously, that's currently in preview. There's no APIs for it. Um, so, you know, you have to use it through their, uh, their web page. You can kind of have session tokens and all that sort of stuff, but we're not going to not going to cover that today. Um, uh, so that is um, sort of an enhanced version or, or a trained version of GPT-3 or specifically GPT-3.5. Um, that has been tweaked to sort of better lead a conversation than sort of the standard uh, GPT-3 product. So <clears throat> a quick word on chat GPT in a bit more detail. Um, it's not to be con uh, confused with chat. Uh, chat GPT is not to be confused with GPT-3. They are kind of um, ones based on the other, but they are separate. So um, today we're not going to cover chat GPT. As I mentioned, there's no real a API that I can integrate uh, with yet. So uh, it doesn't make sense to have a, have a, a session on it really. Um, so um, instead, we're going to talk about GPT-3 as they are uh, supported within an, a, uh, an AI API um, and we can go over that. So uh, what is GPT-3? It understands and generates natural language. So it's not necessarily just generating the natural language as in, you know, write me a poem about, you know, whatever. Um, it also needs to understand what we're asking it. So it could be a simple, you know, what is two plus two or it could be, you know, uh, you know, two paragraphs asking it to do something. They're different ends of the um, 
of, of the spectrum, but ultimately they're both um, natural language. So this is used using different models. So in, in GPT-3, there is more than one model, and we'll cover that now. Um, we have four models, um, and each model has like a, an iteration of it. So the top one, uh, Da Vinci 003, so that's the third iteration of the, uh, the model. Um, that is generally the most advanced one, so that's where you're going to get the best results. Um, ultimately, there is a, a higher cost associated with that one. And then also we have ADA, which is the most sort of basic, I guess, uh, and that's generally used for smaller tasks um, or, or more simple tasks that um, don't involve particularly complicated uh, scenarios. So we'll quickly go over the solution that we have. It's a very simple solution. We have a, uh, in this case, uh, a Teams client that's connected to an Azure bot registration or an Azure bot, and then that connects up to a HTTP uh, request a trigger. Uh, in an Azure function. Um, today, the demo I will run locally, but so it could be hosted in Azure. So it's a very simple uh, stack, and that connects to an OpenAI API to uh, to uh, to allow the uh, the sort of the AI to kind of form a response. So the general flow is Teams client will send a message to the uh, to the Azure bot. The Azure bot will send it to the uh, the Azure function. The Azure function will then send that text that's been sent from Teams to the API, the API respond with a with an answer, and then then goes down to the back down to the client. So it's a very straightforward scenario. I'm losing my voice, so I do apologise. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so let's just quickly go to the demo. Um, so let me quickly show it you in live. Um, so as you can see here, I've got a, a conversation. I'm asking it what its favourite number is. Uh, it's told me it's 17, but literally five minutes ago it told me it was eight. And now it's seven. So, uh, you know, very silly conversation, but it kind of shows you that there is you know, a bit of variance and, and, and a bit of sort of playfulness with the AI. So I can now ask it a different question. So uh, I can say, uh, what is your favourite drink? I have no idea what it's going to say, but we'll find out. What the centre that is. It's time to think about it. Ice cream tea. OK, I'm not even sure what that is, but I'm sure it's delicious. So again, yeah, um, OK, uh, what else do you like? And again, we can ask it another question. And it's going to think about it. Uh, OK, I was more about the drink, but OK, you can be a bit more uh, uh, open than that. Uh, OK, so there we go. That's what they like. Um, so we'll quickly co cover the uh, sort of the, the Azure part of it now, which is uh, Generally, in in the in the, the in this scenario, I've only got the the Azure bot. Obviously, if it was running in Azure, you might have the Azure functions in here as well. Um, but I will show that in in uh, sort of like running locally to and show you how it all works. So, as far as a uh, configuration goes, we've literally got a bot profile. Uh, you can give it a name, upload a logo, um, and then from a configuration point of view, as I said, as it's running locally on my machine, I've got Angrok to uh, sort of tunnel the uh, the bot back through to my local machine. And that's about it from a configuration point of view in here. It's very straightforward. Um, from a channel perspective, obviously we're using Teams, but you can use other channels. Um, the sample does actually work with other channels. Obviously it's a, a Teams focused uh, session, but there's nothing to stop you using the code uh, in, other, in other ways. OK, so let's quickly go into uh, showing you that. So if I run it in web chat, so this is obviously not in Teams, I still get the uh, the bot and I can say, uh, do you like cheese? OK, let's see what they say. It's like cheese. OK. OK. Which is your favourite? OK. And again, so this is a different conversation to the one in Teams. It's using the same code. Uh, OK, that's not quite right, but OK. That's AI for you. Um, OK. So that is it from the configuration point of view, I think, uh, in Azure. So I'll quickly flip over to the code. I'm conscious that we don't have too much time, so um, I might make that slightly larger uh, for everyone to see. So this is the sort of the main entry point into the into the Azure function. So um, we're effectively creating a uh, an open AI bot uh, instance, and we are um, sort of uh, authenticating. So if I just show you the code here 
for the authentication part, we are using, um, in this case, because we're running locally, we're using an app password, but the code is uh, configured in a way using the, the cloud adapter that we could uh, absolutely use uh, NSI. So if this is running in Azure, we don't need to use client secrets and whatnot. So um, we're effectively receiving the message, we're creating uh, an instance of the, or getting an instance of the bot, um, and then we're sending it to the, uh, the bot to run uh, the, the code. So <clears throat> if we look at the, uh, the code for the bot, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, we have two uh, activity handlers. So I'll cover the first one, uh, sort of the second one first, which is a very straightforward one. So when a member is added to the chat, so like we were showing you in um, the, the web chat, we send a welcome message, pretty straightforward. A bit of code here. We, we have an adaptive card that's obviously uh, got the welcome message in, and then we go through and we we send the attachment as as an activity. Just say hey, welcome. Ask me any question, whatever. And then the main part of the code uh, is in here, and this is where we're using uh, an OpenAI API key to get the um, uh, sort of be able to call the uh, OpenAI API, and we're using the uh, official OpenAI uh, module which we're importing up here um, and passing it a prompt. Uh, we're also passing it the model that we want to use. So if you remember before, there was four different models. And we are, you know, we can, well, I'll show you how we configure that in a minute, but it's pretty straightforward. And we're also uh, configuring how many tokens. So the more tokens you provide it, generally the better response or the better um, or potential potential for a response that you get back. So maybe we're getting not great results today in this particular demo um, with, with the answers it's giving. If you give it more tokens, maybe you'll get a better better answer back. So once we've got the, uh, uh, we create the completion, we um, we sort of wait for the response. Once once the response comes back, we uh, choose the first choice because generally there's only one choice that comes back from a um, from an answer. We take the text from that and we pipe that into an adaptive card. So we've got the uh, the answer card, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and we effectively inject the answer into the card. Once that's been uh, injected, we then send the adapter card back to the, uh, the Teams client uh, as an activity. So we attach the card to the activity and send it. From a configuration point of view in Teams, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We set up a uh, an app register, uh, sorry, app manifest. Um, we put in where we've got the app ID. That's the app ID of the. Um, if I quickly go back to the. Uh, in here, we've got the uh, the app ID that's generated when we create the Azure bot. So we would specify that as the uh, as the app ID, and we just need to specify it in a couple of uh, couple, uh, couple of places. So I use it in the ID of the app, but you could use a different ID there. But mainly, it needs to be in here, um, and you can just obviously specify the ID and what scopes the um, the bot come on, uh, with inside of. That's it for the manifest, and then finally. I'm going to change these, so don't worry. You don't need to screenshot these, but these are, you know, where we have the ID, uh, the app, uh, uh, app ID, the tenant ID, uh, obviously the app password. Like I say, in, in production, you're going to be using MSIs, and no one should be doing this, obviously, because it's running locally on my machine for the demo. Um, I'm obviously uh, using a, an app password. The OpenAI model, again, I'm using the DaVinci 003. You know, in your scenario, you may not need something as advanced as that. You could use an ADA or the uh, the, the Babbage or something like that, where you want something a little bit um, you know, less expensive. Um, so each um, time you're calling the uh, the API, it's not costing you as much. Uh, and then obviously we've got the API key, which is required to call the API. Um, anyone can sign up for uh, the Open AI API account, um, and you, you get like I think it's about twenty dollars worth of credit, something like that that you can you can spend. Um, within three months, I think. So you know, if you want to try this today, you don't have to worry about registering for an account and waiting to hear back. You can kind of get started today. And then finally, I'll just quickly show you the uh, the adaptive card. So we have a very straightforward format here. We've literally got two um, text blocks, um, and this is the welcome card. It's just it's saying, ask me a question. And then the answer card is even simpler. <laughs> we literally have some large text with the answer which gets injected into the uh, into the card. And I think that's it from a code point of view. So I'm just going to go back to the, the deck. Um, and last thing is to say thank you for listening. I do have a um, uh, sort of the code provided. I've put it into the uh, the dev uh, sample uh, 
PMP uh, repo. So obviously, uh, yeah, welcome to have a look and try it out for yourself. Thank you. Really great stuff, Lee. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Love the love the fun that you can have there with the bot uh, and all of that. Thank you.